I don't know. We, we took to Pearl Harbor. Went out to Pearl Harbor, and when we got to Pearl Harbor, because I screwed up there in, in San Francisco, they transferred me to hazardous duty. So I, that broke my first four years worth of good conduct. Then I went on, a, they transferred me to the Gwyn for hazardous duty in the South Pacific. So I took the Gwyn, was out about, was running out of, out of, uh, up and down out of the slot there every night to keep the Jap from reinforcing Guadalcanal. And I guess we'd been out there a few months and they sank the strong, we were out Get softening up the shore batteries and stuff so the Marines could get in. And they sank the strong, and we picked up survivors off the strong and brought them back to, to uh, what, the, what the hell's the name of that? Midway? No. Oh, right across from Guam. No. Uh, across from Guam. Not Guam. No, across from Guadalcanal. Guadalcanal. Savo uh, Island? No. Uh, Salvo's what we went around. Well, I knew it five minutes ago, but I forgot it. Now. Well, you're an old man. You can be forgiven. Yeah, thank you. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we went we went out of there and and uh, picked up survivors. The next time off the Helena, they sank her, and then the next trip out they sank us. And uh, the Henley picked us up, and they, we all wound up in a deserted sea bee camp, and. Uh, Across from Guadalcanal, there on whatever island that that thing was, I can't think of the name of it now. Charlie would know. But uh, we stayed there until they'd come along with a ship and hauled us back to New Me and New Caledonia. And we they put all of us up there and to put us on freight, little flat cars, and hauled us up in the mountains. And they had a bunch of tents up there, and they called it a casualty camp. And we was up there, and nobody was a casualty camp, all right. So when we was waiting there, the skipper come up and said, you're not going to get to go back with us. They don't think you've had enough hazardous duty yet. So somebody in Comdes Pack didn't like me very well. Well, now, this is all after you'd been on the Paul Jones out in the Asiatic Fleet, right? Yeah, you went to Paul Jones. You'd already been through the Paul Jones hazard. Talk about hazardous duty. Yeah, well, that's what the skipper said, and he was mad about it. He said, have you had more time in the war zone than all of us put together? Yeah, right. You just you'd... come out of the damn Philippines. And now they keep throwing more <laughs> hazardous yeah, duty at you. Hazardous duty on the Gwyn, and then... They sank the Gwyn, and they said, I needed some more. And he, I said, well, where am I going? And he said, going down on one of those destroyers in the bay. What? I said, well, what the hell, you know? Won't kill me, maybe. But anyway, he, he got a little, he was shook up about it. And about three days later, he said, by God, you're going home with us. He, caught, he finally pulled enough strings. <laughs> if it hadn't been for him, I'd have still been out there on the destroyers, I guess. I'm looking for more hazardous duty. Looking for more. I mean, you started out with hazardous duty. You uh, were in the first attack against the Japanese in the Pacific in Balakapapan. Yeah. On well, the we Paul was hazardous Jones. duty all the way out of the Philippines. Yeah. So yeah. you've been there for hazardous duty, and this is a year later, and they're telling you you need more hazardous duty. Somebody didn't like the name Schindler in, in Comdes Pack. You know what it was? Yeah. See, they, I went. I tried to go with Charlie. We went over there at the submarine base in Pearl. They wanted volunteers to be uh, uh, listed pilots. We both went over and passed, and they wouldn't let me go because I was a radio man. Hmm. Uh, that's another Comdes pack deal. Well, they wanted more radio men, right? It said I could copy 40 words a minute and get news press, and it takes longer to make a high-speed code copier than it does a pilot. So. What what happens here is you got all these, you don't get enough good conduct, so you no. don't get the good conduct muddle, and as a result, this is why when we look at your sleeve, it's all red. How come you're wearing red? I thought you would have white. Well, you moved to the, you moved to the CBs, but you used to be a radio when you would have had white. No, you don't. Have, they're all red and blue. Always red. Okay, all blue. It's either red or gold. Okay. But the only get, way you can get gold, you have to have three of those, which is 12 years good conduct. And you don't have enough good I didn't even get one of them. Well, I'm surprised they let you stay in the Navy. I am too. <laughs> <laughs>
They always recommended me for re-enlistment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah.